Hello, this is my first time doing a video like this. Recently I've been watching some FNAF video essays and I thought it would be fun to do one myself about my own game. Nocturnal Nightmare is my fourth FNAF fan game I've made and the first fan game I've put effort into. This video will go over the game itself as well as some behind the scenes stuff such as early concepts and scrapped content. I will also be talking about the sequel that's in the works and how it will improve the cons in Nocturnal Nightmare 1. The first two chapters will talk about the story and gameplay, so if you've already experienced the game or don't need a refresher you can skip to this timestamp. The story begins when a catastrophic event known as the Blackout occurs in Bloxton, Alabama, a fictional town. Many residents are turned into nocturnal creatures that excel in stealth and intelligence. Within just a few hours, the entire town was overrun with creatures. The military managed to establish a perimeter around the town, but the creatures showed no interest in trying to break out. Two years later, a group decides to enter the town, with the intention to figure out what caused the Blackout and why the creatures stay in the town. To stay safe, the group only travels by foot during the day. The group comes across an arcade with a camera system inside and repairs it. Later that night, the protagonist, Chase, volunteers to stay at the arcade and monitor it for creature activity until morning. John calls Chase that same night and explains how to survive creature attacks if they were to happen. Creatures do end up attacking Chase, but Chase survives. On the second night, when John calls Chase, he tells Chase that the creature with pitch black skin and glowing green eyes that Chase saw on the first night had never been seen before. John also states that the specific creature could be the reason behind the blackout. On the third night, John tells Chase that the group plans to capture the pitch black creature to study it outside of Bloxton. On the fourth night, John tells Chase that the group's hideout might have been discovered by the creatures. Chase returns to the hideout later that morning, as usual, and nothing goes wrong. On the fifth and final night of the game, John calls Chase one last time and tells Chase that it is not safe to return to the hideout. He tells Chase to escape Bloxton as soon as the sun rises. Also throughout the final night of the game, the pitch black creature can be heard saying, come rot with us, over and over again throughout the night. Later that morning, Chase escapes the arcade alive. And that's where the story of Nocturnal Nightmare 1 ends. So the player has five tools that they can use against the creatures in the game. The first one is the chair. Clicking either door will move the chair to the respective door and will prevent certain creatures from entering through that door. The second tool is the vent door and can be closed by hovering the cursor over the lever next to the vent door. The lever must be held down to keep the vent door closed. Having the vent door closed prevents a certain creature from entering the office. The third tool is the cameras and I don't really need to explain what it's used for. The fourth tool is the camera flash. It's only accessible when the cameras are on and it affects certain creatures in certain ways, which I'll explain in more detail later. Also, it has a cooldown when you use it. The fifth and final tool is the breaker box, which toggles the power. While the power is off, you cannot use the cameras and you cannot shut the vent door. You can still move the chair around, however. Turning the power off is instant, but turning on the power takes a few moments. Keeping the power off is super important and I'll explain later. Now that I've explained how all the tools work, it's time to talk about how the creatures function and how the tools are used to deter them. The first two creatures are Father and Respiration. They both work the exact same way, except Respiration operates on the left side of the map while Father operates on the right side of the map. They both slowly progress through their respective side until they reach their respective door to the office. The chair must be moved to the correct door when one of them is close to a door. To prevent Father and Respiration from seeking up and moving at the same pace, the camera flash can be used to stun one of them for a short amount of time. The next character is Husk. Husk will progress through the map until it reaches the vent opening, and Husk will go away when the vent door is shut. Husk is not affected by the camera flash. The next character is Frenzy. It will appear on either camera 3, 4, or 5, playing a sound cue in the process and the camera flash must be used on its current location to deter it. The final character is Blackout. Blackout works much differently than everyone else. Blackout is the one sitting next to the breaker box and slowly becomes more and more awake the longer the power is on. Simply having the power off will pause its progress. Once Blackout is fully awake, it will stand up and the power will be turned off and cannot be turned on again, leaving you defenseless aside from guessing where the chair should be moved to. That's all of the characters, now I'll talk about who's active on what nights. On night 1, Father, Respiration, and Blackout are active. On night 2, Husk is introduced to the mix. And on night 3, Frenzy is introduced. And nights 4 and 5 are the same but harder than each other. After completing the game, which is beating night 5, the custom night will be unlocked, which includes presets and two toggleable challenges. Extended night and aggressive creatures. Having extended night enabled turns the base 6 minute night into 7 minutes. Enabling aggressive creatures makes all of the creatures more aggressive. Nocturnal Nightmare has three badges that can be unlocked. The first one, Rotten, is unlocked by simply beating the game. The second one, Never Afraid of the Dark, is obtained by beating Nyctophobia, which is the custom night preset that sets all of the characters to their maximum difficulty. The final badge, Necrosis, is obtained by beating Nyctophobia with both of the challenges enabled. That's everything you need to know about the gameplay of Inin. So Nocturnal Nightmare has changed a lot since the first concept. 
It was a completely different game back then. I started coming up with ideas for the game in early April 2023. Well, the first idea I had for the game was a UCN type game, and all of the characters were scary looking creatures that looked like my friends' Roblox avatars. After writing down some mechanics, I became dissatisfied with how the game was looking, so I scrapped the UCN game idea and decided it was better to do a more traditional style FNAF game, with a smaller roster where every character plays a big part in making the game difficult. This is when the game started to look like the NN that released. The first iteration of the guard tools was similar to the one seen today. The old mechanics include the aforementioned chair and office power toggle mechanic, as well as the switch to toggle power in the arcade room. The arcade power switch would have been used to distract one character when it got too close to the office. This didn't make the final cut because it just didn't make sense and it didn't look like it would synergize well with the other gameplay elements. The toggle power room switch would have either been used for a character that would go away once the power was turned off or just for blackout. The character that would go away when the power was turned off was pretty much just turned into husk and the vent door mechanic was added. A character that had to be viewed on the camera to slow its inevitable progress to the office, similar to costume from CECR, was once considered but quickly canned due to the fact that blackout was already filling a similar role. Now, remember how I said earlier that the creatures were planned to look like my friends' as Roblox avatars? The reason I made this choice was for a story-related reason, but after thinking about it I realized that the lore I had planned for the game sounded pretty stupid on paper and so the plot and creature appearance was changed entirely. I won't get into what the old version of the game was going to be like, but I will talk about what Father used to look like since it's somewhat interesting. So Father used to be called Rot and wore a banana costume, still having the dark skin and glowing green eyes. Fun fact, I actually made a render using Rot, and that render was used for the old game icon. That's pretty much the story of what Inan started out as and what the game is today. Frenzy and Blackout were the only two creatures to have changes during development. Frenzy's original mechanic was the same except whenever you flashed it, it would go to another camera and you had to flash it again. You would have to flash Frenzy a total of three times before it went away. This was changed to just one flash because balancing this with flashing the other two characters would have been a nightmare. Frenzy also had tentacles on his back, but it didn't fit with the other character's design so the tentacles were removed. Blackout's changes are a little less interesting and it is just his mechanic that was different. His mechanic was the same concept, the only difference being his awakeness meter would feel fast but having the power off would make the meter decrease. This was changed into the mechanic that's in place today because I wanted the player to feel more pressure knowing that Blackout is inevitably waking up. Lastly, I wanted there to be three custom like exclusive characters. These three characters wouldn't have been my own characters, but instead characters from other FNAF fan games specifically made on Roblox. The three characters in question would have been Big Q from Shifts at Big Q's, Mala from Five Nights at a Weird Complex two years later, and Marcus from the Five Nights at Marcus series. This ended up not happening, mostly because I was lazy and I couldn't think of balanced mechanics for the three more characters. In in takes inspiration from so many other FNAF games. Games. It's almost like I took small aspects from other games and sort of just blended those aspects into my own game. The biggest inspiration for the setting and atmosphere was the Fanatic games made by Radiance. I really like the idea of an abandoned setting filled with unknown entities stalking the place. The gameplay of Inan is sort of a combination of a couple of different games. The chair mechanic was inspired by Phobia the Awakening. In Phobia there are two characters that slowly travel through vents and only one vent can be sealed at a time. I found this gameplay element super fun and just had to add this to Inan. All of the other mechanics in the game are sort of like CECR mechanics in a way. Frenzy being similar to Munch, Husk being similar to Chuck, and Blackout being similar to Costume. What do I think of my own game? I'm not too disappointed given it's my first FNAF game I took seriously. Definitely an improvement compared to my previous title, Shifts at Cybers. The main reason is that when I was making Shifts at Cybers, I spent a total of two seconds coming up with the gameplay mechanics. I'm personally not very fond of the gameplay loop, and it also has RNG issues. The gameplay in it is something I'm super proud of, and I honestly don't think I can make something better than it. The visual quality of the game is something that could have been done better. The arcade setting could have been more detailed. I also feel like the characters could have been fleshed out a bit more if I planned to include an extras menu in the game. Overall, I'm pretty proud of what I released. So for the final segment of the video, I'm going to shift focus on the sequel that I'm currently making, Nocturnal Nightmare 2 Fear the Fire. I won't talk about it for long as I don't want to give away a lot of information about the game at the moment. So remember how I said I was disappointed in how the map in in, in looked? Well, in 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 2, I'm so much more satisfied with how the map looks. There's a lot more detail compared to the first game's map, as well as a bunch of easter eggs referencing other FNAF Roblox games. I also personally think storytelling and lore is going to be much better this time around. As for gameplay, I'm a bit uneasy with the planned mechanics at the time of writing this script, but I think it will turn out not horrible. Before I move on to the conclusion, I'd like to point out that there's a public beta for the game that I'm currently making. The beta will include a single night with three of the characters. I'll be posting updates via community posts on my channel, so if you want to stay updated on my game, you can subscribe right now. If you've made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. This is my first time doing a video essay, so I hope I did it right. Anyways, I don't know how to end this video, so goodbye.